or 44, I'd say this is 44. So. I mean, I'm but the quality I'm feels good. I mean, it looks very sturdy. The aluminum looks good. I don't see any defects in it. There we go. So 18. See, watch as I tilt it back, you get a better. All right, going up to the 19s. So this is why I love those LFD crossbars. And um, I've never spoken to the company other than they did me right. I'll, I'll explain what happened with LFD stuff in a minute, but I'll show you why they're really awesome for solar panels and why you should probably consider them. The main thing to keep in mind is that uh, normally a roof rack on a vehicle, you can spend between $800 and $2,000, depending on how decked out you want them to be. What's really cool about these panels, and look, I'm gonna show them to you real quick and keep talking is that they actually just replace the factory cross members. So you don't get rid of this rail. That's the factory rail, right? And what's really cool about it is, look, if you look here, they just set in there. So you can move them around left and right. You can either take these bolts out and just lift it up, right? So it's super easy to, to move and adjust. So here's what I've done. This back one wasn't quite lined up for me. So all I did was take the handy Allen key that they give you because they have like secure um, Allen head bolts. And I wanted the front to stay. So if you notice, the front is lined up just like it's supposed to be. And then I just move this rear bar back until it's lined up. And these things come powder coated for like $79. So they're super cheap. I do recommend adding that wind fairing. It's like an extra $40, I think but um, it cut down the noise dramatically. So what's cool about it is how easy it is to adjust, how simple it is, and how inexpensive that this is. This is, I think I spent $200 including shipping and tax and everything. One of these bars came to me and the little tabs on it right here were bent. So I reached out to the LFD guys and basically they were like, Oh, just send us a picture. So I sent him a photo of what it looked like. And I said, uh, I'm happy to send it back or whatever. And if you just send me another one, he goes, nah, keep it. If you can fix it, you can keep it too, by the way. So I was able to take a hammer and beat that little bend out of it. And they shipped me another one on the house for free. And I got to keep it. So now I have three bars instead of just two. Plus I'd ordered the wind fairing because I did realize there's a bit of a wind noise with it, right? So. I, instead of me having to pay shipping for the wind fare, and he said, nah, we'll cover the shipping since we're already shipping the thing back, uh, shipping you an extra bar. And so I just bought the wind fairing. They paid for the shipping and they gave me a free bar. I, I couldn't be happier with these guys. And this is so simple to set up the solar. Like this is, this is perfect because I have a quick disconnect now because also I'm also intending to run my roto packs. Front one and the rear one can mount the solar panel and the front one and the middle one can adjust to mount my Rotopax connector perfectly. Okay, it's time we're out here. I pulled the truck out in the sun. I hadn't bolted it on yet, but it's sitting there. It's in the sun. I'm getting juice from it, right? So let me make sure that this hatch opens. I haven't tried this yet, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Perfect, look at all that room. So here's all the hardware connectors, brackets, everything that I'm gonna be using to uh, set it up on the roof, get it connected. Here is an MC4 and both the male and female and then the inserts that are male and female. I need to determine which goes where. So looking at the panel, I can determine on the positive, it's got a male, but the interior is a little bit smaller. The female have the opposite. So there are the pieces that I need to make sure that they are positive. And then I test fit the other ones, got my wire, cut it to length. That way I could uh, set it up on the controller the way that with the right amount of length that I want to match approximately the Anderson connector I'm already using for the DC DC charger right here. So uh, now I just need to put the tips on the wire. So you'll see, <clears throat> uh, split the wire and just strip the wire off. I like using those strippers, not the auto strippers. I'd have better success and fit the right size uh, terminal connector on it. I got my new Klein ratcheting crimpers, which I really enjoy. I haven't had ratcheting crimpers forever. So I cut the length of the positive a little shorter. You'll see why in a minute, but the Anderson connects on the other side. And here's my prefab Anderson plug, boom, installed. 
that's what it looks like. And then I have the little boot that makes it look nice and clean. And then now you see why I cut the positive a little bit shorter. And here's a little time lapse of me setting it up. Here is a helpful way to get this, this, and this all together. Leave this out of the way. Take the braided loom, right? Open this up. Fit this inside of it. Okay. Take this. Once you get it where you like it. Alright, so your finished product will look just like this. Two Anderson Connects. I got the small one for the solar, and the big one for my alternator. And those run to my CTEC charger. And you can see solar, alternator, they all ground. And the battery grounds here. And then this is the positive going out to the battery. So this wire actually goes to my battery. And it does have a break in it. I can di quick disconnect it. So if I need to work on it, I can completely zero out the energy on it. Time to work. Yeah, check it out. All right, so it's saying I'm seeing data and I'm getting input from my solar. I'll fire it up and that should be feeding power into my battery. Oh, yep, there it goes. It's going up. You can't see it on this video very well, but there we go. Look at that. Let's see what it'll top out at. Hopefully around 14.3 or four is what I'd like to see. One more. Come on. Come, yes! <laughs> Just for a second, but hey, it counts. Yes. I feel so accomplished. I did it. Check that out. Man, I'm, I'm really excited about this. And that panel was less than $100. The brand is New Power, and I'll put a link in the uh, description. Is my Anderson connection that I can plug my vehicle into. So what's neat about this is I can actually plug them in together and they will combine to uh, work on the battery. And what's cool about the uh, one of these, you can also, other great brands are Renogy and uh, Red Arc. Um, I've had this one for a couple of years and it's been flawless. But if I got another one today, I'd probably go with the Red Arc. Um, the 25 amp, I don't need the 50 amp because then you gotta end up running like four gauge wires or some massive wires. Uh, and they can be kind of tricky to wire. So, but what's cool about this is, you know, you can see that it will see both the solar, it'll also see the alternator and then it's charging the battery, right? Um, what what can, you can do is you can connect them all up. And when you're driving on the road, 
um, it'll it'll use a combination of solar and alternator power and that will keep that battery charged at the proper voltage be it bulk absorption or float that's a smart multi-stage controller so it knows the difference and it knows the state of charge of the battery and everything um, but when I turn the vehicle off it actually isolates this isolates this battery away from my cranking battery so this can continue to charge phones run refrigerators do lights and stuff but if for any reason the voltage were to drop too low it cuts off the connection to the cranking battery that way i don't leave myself stranded excellent basically it's a voltage sensitive relay or a battery isolator plus a solar controller plus a dc dc charger all in one intelligent you don't have to really do anything with it right it makes life easy um but the other cool thing is while connected to solar if this battery is topped off it'll actually flip this relay and start charging your cranking battery. So right now it'll be topping off my cranking battery for me. So not only will that keep me from getting stranded, adding the solar will even charge up the battery that cranks my vehicle if I get stranded. So yes, it's a little wiry, you know, you got wires everywhere, uh, but I made it modular because I used to carry it between my vehicle and my wife's and I still like to take it and set it on a picnic table or give it to a friend. So it makes it really simple uh, and modular to build it like this because now you can just move it around as you need to. Um, the downsides to the system, it's a, it's a sealed lead acid. I do have a lithium on order. It's coming on the slow boat. So it's gonna take like two months. I have a BMS, I have everything. I'm gonna require a different DC-DC charger because that one is only designed for flooded lead acid, sealed lead acid, and then a gel battery. So it cannot handle lithium, but essentially what I would get is exactly that again that can also manage a lithium profile. So 37 and a half amp hours of uh, battery on a fridge, pulling about 50 watts with a 50 duty or 50% duty cycle. I, I guesstimate it'll last about a day, but with the solar, I can put in as many watts as it takes out. So in theory, uh, about 450 watt hours um, of, of battery power that I'm dealing with here, if you wanna convert it or whatever. Uh, that panel's a 100 watt hour, probably putting out, let's say 70% efficiency. Uh, if it's 70, I'll be happy with it. So 70 watt hours, five, five or six hours a day of good quality. Of course, I'm mounted vertically, so it's not being the most efficient, right? So let's say five hours at 70, uh, 35, 350. If I drive my car just a little bit, I can make up that difference. So I should be able to keep it going dang near indefinitely off of just a single 100 watt panel and uh, the technology that's in this DC-DC charger. One of the reasons I love these LFD bars so much, super low profile, right? So even with those bars and that, I bet it's lower than the stock TRD Pro's rack. I'm gonna just measure from the roof. I'm, I'm falling off the roof. <laughs> Let's try that again. Measure from the roof. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm at four and a half inches off the roof. So if the TRD Pro Rack were on there, I actually still have two and a half inches of additional clearance that I wouldn't have with the rack on there. There you go. Uh, questions, hit me up. I'd be happy to answer them, but I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.